Dr. I would like to go over some important housekeeping rules for the sake, you know, of courtesy. You are muted now and will remain muted until the instructor asks me to unmute you or finishes their presentation. Your videos are currently on and you may keep them on, but I'm sure our presenter would appreciate no distractions and the nonverbal communication. But please remember that you can be seen and turn off your video if you don't want us to see you. If you have any questions during the presentation, you may type it in the chat. Simply place a question mark at the beginning of your question so that it is easily recognized in the chat. We will do our best to respond to each question to the best of our ability. And now here comes for our exciting, exciting opportunity. Your presenter today is none other than the fabulous Dr. Godfrey McAllister. Who is Dr. Godfrey McAllister, you may ask and wonder? Well, he is a motivational speaker, an author, consumer advocate, mediator, chartered financial consultant. Among his many insurance industry distinctions, he is a past member of the ultimately prestigious top of the table pinnacle of the international million dollar round table. He was also American Life Insurance Company's number one worldwide personal accident insurance sales producer for seven consecutive years, each year breaking his own record. He is the first distinguished Toastmaster in the Caribbean. He's possibly the first person in the world to earn the distinguished Toastmaster designation in a record breaking 12 months. Dr. Godfrey is a Toastmasters International four-time multi-district table topics champion and a 2017 world champion of public speaking finalist. Distinguished Toastmaster Dr. McAllister is the conceptualizer and international coordinator of the increasingly popular and recently concluded worldwide imprompt speaking extravaganza, AKA WISE. WISE is dedicated to the teaching, training, and honing of imprompt and persuasive thinking and speaking skills. Dr. McAllister's trademark name and mantra are Dr. Perspective. And the only thing over which you have complete control is your perspective. How true is that? So please, please help me welcome to the virtual lectern our keynote speaker. Distinguished Toastmaster who needs no introduction, Dr. Godfrey E. McAllister. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, somewhere along the line, I think I learned that Toastmaster says that the presenter must never say thank you. I believe that they're about to take that out from the, <laughs> the records because <laughs> whether they say it or not, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say thank you because it isn't very often that People want to listen to me. <laughs> Most people think I have nothing to say. <laughs> so when somebody says, I want to listen to you, I got to say, thank you. And that's exactly what I'm saying. This is going to be a whirlwind experience for the simple reason that I want to give you as much as possible, knowing that you'll be drinking from a fire hydrant. But here's the trick. Here's the magic. It's going to be recorded. And whereas I don't share my notes, I do share my recordings. And it is designed for that. So please, Follow along, uh, make notes for your questions. We, I'll make sure that we get in uh, some Q&A time. And I believe that's where the learning really amps up and ramps up and really, really gets to a very high level. So we got our uh, mass head on the screen for some time. So let us move right into it. Okay. Table Topics is about impromptu speaking. Speaking when called upon suddenly, yes. Speaking without a prepared script. <laughs> speaking in the moment, yes. All of that could be considered to be Table Topics. Now, this is something that I want to emphasize, and that is a lot of us begin our Table Topics experience by focusing on what we say. May I humbly recommend to you that before you open your mouth, you put your brain in gear, yes. In other words, think before you speak. And in another seminar, I coined the term impromptu 
thin speaking, <laughs> impromptu thinking and impromptu speaking, I call it impromptu thin speaking. But certainly, let us get accustomed to the reality that we have to think before we speak if we want to write things to come out of our mouth. Now, how long and when should I begin thinking? That's a very good question. How long? The longer, the better. <laughs> Unfortunately, in table topics, they only give you about five seconds. And if I'm a judge and after your name is called the last time and you are still waiting for 10 seconds, I'm going to mark you down <laughs> because that is no longer impromptu uh, speaking. When do you think? Before you speak, not afterwards. Oops. Do you know that word? Oops. That's when you think after you speak. Think before you speak. And then a big problem gets in the way. What's that problem? It's called fear. Oh! And you've heard that the fear of public speaking is worse than the fear of death. Lie. Not true. But you know something? We have a saying in Jamaica, when it negotiates, it goes near, sir. <laughs> what that means is that it's not true that the fear of public speaking is worse than the fear of death. But it is true that the fear of, of public speaking is as real as the fear of death. And yes, nobody wants, well, most people don't want to die. So let's dive in a little bit into fear, fear of public speaking. I believe the word is glossophobia. So what is it? Is it the fear of speaking? I say no. Why? <laughs> because we all have cell phones, right? Oh, come on. Cell phone companies have the highest rising stocks in the world. Is it the fear of the public? And I say yes, it is the fear of the public part of public speaking. So you ask the question, why? Because humans are private and I am human. Yeah, you may have had your doubts, but yes, <laughs> I am a human and I suspect so are you. Oops, hello. Do you recognize that <clears throat> guy or gal? <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> but uh, do you recognize that? Yes, the facts are that for the first nine months of our, of our lives, we have been what? Private. And then we were socialized to be private. We were taught to be insecure for our own security. Isn't that a, what's that? Anna, Anna Propism. Come on, come on, people, help me, grammarian. Anna, something, something, whatever. <laughs> we'll figure that out in the question time. We are taught to be insecure for our own security. Let's put a little bit of foundation, you know, science onto this thing, especially in this, these days of fake news and the, 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 the pandemic of disinformation. Let's get some, uh, some rounding, founding facts here. A neuropsychologist, Dr. Theo Serres, accurately captures the essence of fear in basic terms. He says, and I quote, fear and anxiety involve the arousal of the, atonic, the autonomic sorry, nervous system in response to a potentially threatening stimulus. When confronted with a threat, our bodies prepare for battle. This hyperarousal leads to the emotional experience of fear, and it interferes with our ability to perform comfortably in front of audiences. And in the interest of time, I should mention to you that I'm confirming, and so does the, the good uh, neuropsychologist, that yes, there is flight, and there is fright, and there is freeze. Fr fr Freezeite, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but the point is that none of these are productive they are all counterproductive so much for fear i'm not going to go through these i grabbed these from the web i threw in a few of my own you go do your own homework man but interesting acronyms of fear false evidence appearing, appearing real false expectations appearing real frantic effort to avoid reality oops i love that failure expected and received we call that self-fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. future events already ruined yes you decide that today will be a bad day. Of course it will be a bad day. <laughs> You've already made the decision. Finding excuses and reasons, but I want to pause for those highlighted in green because those are the ones that will take us out of the pit. One, for everything, there's a reason. Keep that in mind. Face everything and recover. How many times you thought you died? Lie, you didn't die. <laughs> you only felt overwhelmed, that's all. Face everything and recover. Face everything and respond. Forget everything and relax. What? Relax in the storm? Yes. Yes. I can do it because Jesus is in my boat. I don't know who is in your boat, but I hope it's somebody who can help you to relax, knowing that that person will take care of 
all the problems that appear to be overwhelming you. And of course, face everything and rejoice, which is the ultimate Christian experience. Face everything and rejoice. It, it is counterintuitive. It don't make sense. All right? The bills can't be paid. Hallelujah, down the glory. What? I just said the bills cannot be paid. I'm about to get a divorce. Hallelujah. Well, no, let's go there. <laughs> but the bottom line is that it takes a very a highly trained spiritual mind to face everything and uh, rejoice. Now, let's get back into our main focus, or should I say our focus? Fear of being judged. Now, the fear of, of speaking in the public to the public involves at least the following in multiple combinations. One, fear of being judged. I call that induced inferiority complex. Two, fear of underperformance by your own standards. Oh, tell me about that. I hate to give lectures on competing because I'm a bad example. I take competitions too seriously. And I'm saying to you, it's a disclaimer, don't take competitions too seriously, please. Especially when you don't know who the judges are. <laughs> Especially when the judges are anonymous. When they come from different cultures. When they may not understand. Come on, give me a break. The list goes on and on. However, however, have faith in the system. Toastmasters tries to overcome that by having multiple judges from different cultures so that we trust the average result. Okay. Fear of failure and looking stupid. Who likes to look stupid here? Please raise your hand. God, please take down your hand. You must listen to the question. The question was, who likes to look stupid? <laughs> and certainly, I, 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 I made a mistake when I put my hand up. None of us like to look stupid. Fear of disapproval and or rejection. We are gregarious creatures. All of us like to be. We all like to be accepted and loved. Yes. We like to be a part of the crowd, a part of the gang. We like to belong. And fear of disapproval and or rejection always results or contributes to fear. And what we're doing is going through the analysis of fear. Now, I don't know which of these apply to you. None of them might apply to you. But if it doesn't apply to you, it applies to somebody else that you might be able to help. What about number five? Fear of revealing ignorance of a subject or incompetence in a situation. That happens in table topics all the while. And so what we teach in some clubs, and I am here as an expert to say to you, mash down that lie. What we teach in many clubs is that when you don't know anything about the topic, segue into something else, foolishness. That is not a, a, a good best practice, and I suggest that you cease and desist. Your job is to do your best. I wish we would have time, I suspect we will not, for me to give a demonstration, which I've done in many other lectures that are less pressure than this one in terms of time. <laughs> but I will give a demonstration where somebody in the audience throws any question at me. I don't care what it is. And I will stick to the question and answer you for two minutes. Uh, but whatever, some of the time I'll give you that demonstration. But suffice it to say, if I can do it, you can do it. Believe you can do it, don't segue. If they ask you about cats, don't talk about dogs. Because, well, you like dogs. No, talk about cats. Okay. Fear of vulnerability. Nobody wants to feel vulnerable. And, of course, fear of the unknown. Yes, fear of the unknown. To the rescue! Yay! TNI, District 4 to 7, Division D and E, to the rescue! All right. So, let's see what we have here now. All right, so this is going to be a, a rundown. And remember, this is being recorded, and you will be getting the recording if you ask for it. So I, I know you're drinking from a fire hydrant, but I have to do that because of time. I'd rather uh, go fast and give you as much as possible that you can then digest at your own pace than go slow and shortchange you. Have I made the right decision? Yes, I have. <laughs> All right. So. At the workplace. Why do I start off with the workplace? Because most of us, Toastmasters is not our reality. We spend a few hours a week in Toastmasters, but Toastmasters doesn't pay the bill. We spend more, times at, more of our time at work. At work, that's where the action is. That's our reality, not in a Toastmasters club. Our Toastmasters club is like the petrol station. You come and you refuel, but then you get on the road. You don't stay at the gas station for the rest of your life. And so I started with the workplace. So to make this optimally practical, let's go. Are you ready? Here we go.
at the workplace. You expect it to be called on. There's no surprises. Why do you think they're paying you? <laughs> they're paying you because they, have, they reserve the right to call on you at any time. So if you are not, if you caught by surprise, something is wrong with you. Adjust your thinking. All right, what next? You are the expert in your area. Again, why am I paying you? Very few people are paid to learn. They're called apprentices and they get a stipend. But when you get in that big fat check at the end of the month, it's not because you're a student. It's because you are now at an ex you are now at expert level and you are now able to contribute to the organization. So you are the expert in your area. Notice the last part, in your area. So if you are the expert chef, you're not likely to be called into the boardroom to uh, give an analysis of the latest uh, financial quarter, finances. You're an expert cook, not an expert at cooking the book. I'm sorry, why, why did I say that? Where, where did that come from? I'm sorry about that. Here we go. You have what others need. I know you're humble, yes. I can see that by the look on some faces. I know you're modest. I know you don't think much of yourself. <laughs> oh, no, don't mention it. Not me, no. Give me a break. You have what others need. If you don't believe that, you ain't got no business in life, period. <laughs> Let's go die. <laughs> you know what I mean? You are an asset. You are an asset. You have what others need. And then your audience needs you. So as a general principle, you have what others need, but your audience needs you. Please, your employer needs you. What, what am I doing here? I'm taking it from general, the funnel effect, and now it down. And now we are at the workplace, your employer needs you. Feel important, you are important, and validate your importance. You have prepared your presentation. That's the problem. If you've not, <laughs> if you've not prepared your presentation, you have a right to be afraid, okay? You have a right to be scared if you're unprepared. I'm not gonna waste time on that. There's no excuse for lack of preparation. If that has been your problem in the past, beg forgiveness, the Lord will forgive you. Your employer might not, but the Lord will forgive you. And hopefully if you're still employed, it means you have a second chance. You have prepared your mind. Now this is important. A lot of the battles that we fought are in our mind. In my first book, I wrote these, these lines and it must have been under inspiration because it's bigger than I am. In all you do to yourself be true. For when all is said and done, the battle fought will not be won in any place under the sun other than in thyself. So you have prepared your mind. And then you have prepared your body. All of you, well, let me speak about me. I just came out of the shower. I had my special ceremonial bath. I did everything. I comb my... <laughs> Don't laugh. I comb my hair, <laughs> all right? I, I, I put on my makeup, <laughs> whatever that is, a little thing to not make the face not too dry, yeah? I did my honor and deodorant. I, I'm sorry I can't show you. I, I live in a very, well, I'm in a very small enclosure here, but if I were an acrobat, I will raise my foot. Would you just believe me, please, and not have me do that, please? But I have on my boots. I'm fully dressed. If I have to run out to the road to a real presentation, I'm ready. Fully dressed, as, as I said in my promo, uh, dress from head to toe and not just the parts that will show, especially on Zoom, right? You gotta make sure that you prepare your body because guess what? You're sending a psychological message to your mind when your body is not prepared. And then you have prepared your appearance. Well, I guess I just covered that. And uh, what about the fact that you have invoked the help of God? Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you ask me to speak, you are acknowledging that I will only speak about what I know. And, and this is my experience. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't, I have no other experience. I invoke the help of God in everything that I do, or at least I try to invoke the help of God in everything that I do. If you don't want to, that's your problem. But I recommend that you invoke the help of God in everything you do. And here's a little plug. Don't wait until you need him to try to reach him. 
Enough said on that. <laughs> God loves you and you love God. Now, these are not necessarily statements of fact. I mean, sorry. These are not statements that apply to you. These are what we call on the is ought psychological syndrome model. These are what ought to be. So the is ought syndrome, all of what I'm saying is what ought to be. You will determine what is. But if your is, if your is is not what your ought should be, <laughs> that's a brain twister, right? If your is is different from your ought, decide which to which you want to align yourself. To your is or to your ought. I leave that entirely to you. Let's move on. Here we go. You love your audience. Yes, you love your audience. Yes, 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 yes. You love your audience. And this is no pretense. You know, you can tell when somebody loves you. Oh, a child can tell when somebody loves you. You can be flogging the child, and I'm one of those who have no problem with corporal punishment. You can flog that child, and every lash that you give that child because the child refused to listen to words, the child refused to listen to go in the corner, the child refused to listen to all the other minor <laughs> corrective uh, matters, minor corrective uh, techniques. And you decide to spare not the rod and spoil the child with each lash, whether it's a belt, don't, lash, don't beat him with a, with a big stick or with a barbed wire, please. But with each appropriate lash, that child is hearing, Daddy loves me. Oh, Daddy loves me. Oh, Daddy loves me. That's not a joke. That's seriously. But you, but you got you to gotta make sure that your audience knows. And there's the G-O-D. Wow. My D is in white. So please, it is, it is not God loves you and you love God. It's you love God, okay? Forgive me, please. Wow. You love your audience. Let's go. Let's see if there's anything else. All right, so you expected to be called on. You are the expert in your area, and we've done all of that. You love your audience. You are ready to serve God and mankind. So let's begin with number, well, it's not numbered. God loves you, and you love God. You love your audience. You are ready to serve God and mankind. And that is the attitude that you ought to have when you are at your workplace and you are quote unquote called upon suddenly. Remember, you always to, you ought always to be prepared. There should be no surprises. Now, what about the Toastmasters Club? You have paid your dues to improve your skills. <laughs> oh my goodness. Why Toastmasters just love some of the fool fool Toastmaster them. None are in this room, of course. None are in the district for the seven, <laughs> but in the other, oops, we have visitors from other districts, sorry. <laughs> None are in any of the districts that are visiting us today. But you and I know that there are some fool, fool Toastmasters. Yes, man. Instead of doing one speech every week, they do one speech every three months. So it takes them 10 times longer to get their awards than the other person. And Toastmasters says to them, you take as long as you want. This is a, a free, uh, casual, go at your own pace. Take as long as you want. We have no problem. So long as you pay the Jews every year. <laughs> so, 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 I don't blame Toastmasters. I don't blame them. I mean, I don't blame Toastmasters International. If you want to get them money, give them money. If you want to get little or nothing in return, that's okay by them. They're giving it to you. And do they give a lot. So you paid your Jews to improve your skills. Use the money that you paid. All right? You know Table Topics is preparation for life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm conflating three lectures that I usually give on Table Topics. I'm sorry. I'm very conscious of the time. But this is a, almost a, an entire lecture by itself. You know Table Topics is preparation for life. Why? Because in the real world, as against the, the Toastmasters world, you are called upon to deliver yourself intelligently without notice. So it is preparation for the real world. You do not know the topic you'll be given. I know there's some people in, in the local arena where they try to figure it now. I, I wonder who the table topics master is. Aha, uh -huh, I've heard her before. I know she's gonna say, don't do that. As we will see, you just don't know what the topic is. All right, now you do know the time. <laughs> Only two minutes. So guess what? At least you are not starting off on a blank slate. You know something. You know your audience wants you to succeed. That's the good thing about Toastmasters. 
Even when you are chatting rubbish. It doesn't mean that they are approving the nonsense you're talking. It doesn't mean they're approving the fact that you're unprepared. What they're saying is, we are encouraging you. We know that you can do better next time. Yes, get through this and improve. Follow the recommendations. Next time you'll do better. So we applaud for everything as we ought to. You know the next time you will improve. Oops, did I go ahead of my slide a while ago? <laughs> That's when you know your presentation back to front. Sometimes I go backwards instead of going forwards. Please, <clears throat> you have practice imagination presentations. Now these are ought statements, not is. In other words, what I'm saying to you is practice imagination presentations. I don't recall having gone to any function in my life where I was not the guest speaker. Every function I attend, I am the guest speaker. 99.99% of the times, they don't call on me to speak <laughs> because they have an alternate guest speaker. But I can promise you, I don't care what the function is. When I arrive, I'm ready to hit that lectern. I am always prepared. <clears throat> it's a discipline. It's a state of mind. You breathe deeply and display confidence. That's important. If you attend the international uh, speech training that I'll be given, giving, you will notice something in a demonstration video, but I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, but you breathe deeply and display confidence. It's important. You can't speak without oxygen. I can't breathe is not a good sign. No, it's not a good sign. So breathe. <sighs> Take a deep breath. During the uh, Godfrey McAllister, peace, peace, Godfrey. Take a deep breath. Connect with your spiritual source. If you have not done so before, Take a deep breath, relax. And as you see the green light, green light meaning as you, as they open the gate, go. You smile, you extend your chest. <laughs> yeah, some of us have a little bit more chest than others, but extend where the chest is supposed to be, okay? Just, just, just do that. The chest is there. It doesn't always show, yeah? Like me, I've been going to the gym for a long time and still no chest. Leave that alone for another time, okay? But the point is, you extend your chest. Increase the capacity of the diaphragm, of your lungs. You throw your shoulders back. Authority. Fear. Intimidation. Cowardice. Confidence. You distance yourself from the past and the future. That's what in the moment means. A lot of Toastmasters are thinking about their last experience. Forget that. A lot of them are thinking about something else. Forget that. A lot of Toastmasters are thinking, I wonder what the question is going to be. Forget that too. You don't know. Why think about what you don't know? Listen to what they're saying. And by the way, if I'm a judge, whether at a club level or otherwise, and you ask me to repeat the question, I'm likely to say next speaker. In other words, you must give 100% attention to listening to the question. It's our job to make sure that the articulation of the table topics master is impeccable. But once the topic is clearly given, repeated, you, I'm sorry, you didn't hear? Tough luck. You've just failed. Yeah, and I do use the word fail, okay? You did not succeed, <laughs> all right? I think that's more uh, politically correct. So you listen very carefully to the question. There I go again, going, going ahead of my notes. Well, call this reinforcement. You listen very carefully to the question. You identify the most appealing word. I call those trigger words. And please, ladies and gentlemen, this can be a one month course or a one week course. Certainly, certainly at least a one day course. And I don't apologize for the speed at which I'm going because the whole question of the trigger word, there are games that we play, which we can't play now because of time. But there are games that we play that help you to develop that trigger happy mind. So that when you hear a word, bam, you don't think about it. It triggers something. And usually the first thing it triggers, you go with that. Because you don't have time to have a second trigger. Then you start to weigh, should I go with the first or the second? First or the second? <laughs> Worst of all, if your mind is very fertile and you come up with three or four. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one, two, three, four, one, one. No. First thing that comes, and this is why we must prepare our minds at all times. 
whatever things are true, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any praise, think on these things. So make sure that what you're thinking throughout your life, throughout the day, are things that you can allow to come out of your mouth without any reservation. So you identify the most appealing word and then you take an unusual approach to your answer. Ladies and gentlemen, any kind of speaking, impromptu speaking or international, speak, international speech speaking, you got to amuse people. You got to entertain people. That's what, if there's one contest that we can abandon in Toastmasters now is the humorous speaking contest. Happens to be the one that I'm worst at. <laughs> but anyway, that's another story. You know why? Because in table topics, you got to be humorous to win. In international speech, my God, you got to be humorous to win. In evaluation, you got to throw in some humor to win. So all of the speeches require humor. Take an unusual approach. Uh, that always excites the judges and excites the audience. And now you breathe deeply and display confidence. You smile, you extend your chest, you throw your shoulders back. You identify the most appealing word. You take an unusual approach in your, to your answer. You waste no words. You pause only for effect. At the green, you have laid out your case. Now, this is something that we need to remember. When you have two to three minutes, uh, sorry, when you have one to two minutes to speak, you have a total of two minutes and 30 seconds to speak. If you stop in the yellow, that tells me that your content is shallow. Those who stop in the yellow, content is shallow. You say, well, I don't want to die. No, you wouldn't die. You've got 30 seconds in the, sorry, 30, hold on. Is, is that right? 30 seconds in the red. Use 15. Now, you may not be as risk tolerant as I am. So this is not a law. But all I'm saying is that when you see the red, at least wrap up. Don't stop dead. Wrap up. Go into the call to action. You've got 30 seconds. You can use safely 15 of those seconds. Practice what 15 seconds is so that you're not caught by surprise. At the yellow, you are summarizing and concluding. And at the red, you are applying and calling to action. That's how we use our time. Ladies and gentlemen, it has, it has been a pleasure presenting this whirlwind of our presentation to you because you will be able to see the video. And now, I think this is where the real learning begins. If you have the question, I promise you, I have the answer. I've never failed to answer a question, even if I have to say I don't know. <laughs> so let's see how much I know. Fire away. Madam Moderator, over to you. Dr. Godfrey, what, I, I think your reputation precedes you, clearly. What a fantastic demonstration that you have presented to us. Really fabulous. I think we could all relate to this. Certainly ties in with Leonardo's main speech and everything. So what I will do now, well, first of all, please, 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 everyone, give the presenter a round of applause. Use your emotion icons, put your hands in the air, please give him a distinct recognition for his wonderful, I'm flabbergasted quite frankly, Dr. Godfrey, like I did not expect such a fabulous presentation such as yours that ties in with the main message of Toastmasters, which is teamwork, doing our best, becoming our best. So thank you so much. And everyone, please, thank you so much to, for everybody for attending this session. We appreciate, we certainly appreciate your time and we service. We apologize for any technical difficulties that may have occurred. But honestly, this speech, Dr. Godfrey, I think it, it certainly makes up for it and the wonderful team that we have here. So I will now, what I will do, speaking of technical difficulty, I had trouble copying and pasting, but what I will do now is I will type the link for the forms. So that way you could fill out the evaluation form right away. And thank you so much for your time. <clears throat> that is where you can access the form. Please, everyone, I only take a few minutes of your time. Please fill it out and send it to the appropriate person. Thank you so much. And again, 
once again, um, you have to complete this. Please complete it as soon as possible. Thank you so much to all the Division D&E. We appreciate the fact you took time to come into this presentation today to further develop yourself. I certainly have developed myself wonderful learning experience. This will certainly benefit your club, area, division, and district. And please, the fun is not over yet. Please stick around and enjoy the show. Okay, are there any questions? I have a question, I have a question. Since we have time, can you hear me? Just making sure, can you hear me? Okay, I see your head nodding with Monica. Okay, good. Since we have time, is it possible that we would be able to have like a practice session where something is thrown out at us and then we practice the impromptu speaking and you provide us with a little bit of feedback on how we can improve it? Right, and if that's the only question, of course, the answer is yes. <laughs> Okay, so let me see, let me make sure that I can see, let me go to gallery view. All right, well, everybody who is here obviously wants to be called upon. So I will call upon, uh, I'll call, by the way, please unmute your microphones so we don't use that as an excuse to play for time. <laughs> I know all the tricks, you know what I mean? Unmute your microphones, please. So when I'm calling you, you have like, Three seconds to start speaking. On you, unmute your microphones, please. Well, I don't see anybody unmuting the microphones. So, DeAndre, you better probably will be more <laughs> compliant if you okay. make the request. I'll start. I'll, I guess. See, Thomas is up. Let's give them a all second. Right. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Good. 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 Okay. Here we go. All right. Huh. Wow. What a choice, Thomas. Oh no, there's a second screen. Sorry. Why don't I give the topic and no, that, that doesn't make sense. All right. All right. What a group of shy people. All right. It's a shy or shy. Okay. <laughs> what's that? What's that? What? What's that? They're not, they're not, they're not shy. <laughs> Some of them are completing the forms they said, but I oh, think oh. the friend is up. Okay, okay. All right. So there, okay, fine. So let us let us go. Okay. Thomas. Yes. Flowellin. That's that. That is I. Right. Thomas Flowellin. Peace. Peace. Thomas Flowellin. Thank you, Mr. Presenter and fellow Toastmasters. I'm so happy that you said peace. Oh boy. First of all, I'm trying to get a piece of my mind back together because I'm still reeling over that awesome presentation that you gave. My mind is all over the place, pulling on different things and pulling on different experiences, but you were phenomenal. But in the end, you did give me a certain peace within me. I felt peace because I tended to shy away from my religious position within Toastmasters because it seemed like it wasn't politically correct, but it seemed like you gave me a little more peace that is very okay to talk about God in my Toastmasters experience. I also want to tell you that there is a peace that I have that surpasses all understanding because Toastmasters has given me so much self-confidence, so much love, it's drawn it out of me a lot more than any other thing that I've done. So definitely, definitely, I'm very happy that you spoke about peace and you gave me that word. Thank you so much, Mr. Presenter. I hope to meet you one day in person and I wanna turn it back to you. Thank you very much. And uh, I will limit the, the other speakers to one minute just so that we can get as many persons in. I didn't tell you that ahead of time. Oh. Now. An evaluation, very quick evaluation. Did he address the topic? Come on, yes. unmute your yes. microphones, man. Yes. Sure. Yes. Sure. yes, 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 he addressed the topic. Uh, when I got that topic many years ago, there was a split second where I couldn't choose between P-E-A-C-E -E and P-I-E-C. -E. So you know what I did? I used both. <laughs> All right, I used both. But the bottom line is that I said peace, he chose P-E-A-C-E. -E. Uh, 
but he said a piece of mine. And <laughs> I wasn't sure whether his mind was divided in pieces. Do you see where I'm trying to get some humor out of this thing? Okay. Yes. You, you got to get humor, man. Don't crack jokes. Don't waste time learning other people's jokes. Learn. Come to the come to the international speech presentation, right? I'll, there's a, a little snippet where I'll teach you the building blocks of humor. Not telling jokes, but being humorous. Yes, he did an excellent job. And wow, did he boost up the presenter. Wow, when the <laughs> presenter is the judge and you boost up the presenter, you must be a resounding success. <laughs> All right, let us take somebody else. Uh, domestic, no, Dominique Kalola. Dominique Kaloya, unmute your microphone, man. Come on, with that nice uh, te Texan hat. All right, well, I can't force him to do it. Please tell me, who I else is on Derek, mute? Derek, hand is up. Derek, Derek, Derek. We have Antonio Derek, ready to Derek, go. Derek Raw. Derek Raw is one of our experts, man. But anyway, <laughs> we've got an expert presentation from an expert. Okay. Derek Roll, it only just begun. It only just begun, Derek Roll. One minute. Please time. It me. only takes a spark to get a fire going. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, have you ever been in a situation where you were down? Felt as if though you cannot move. And that one person said that one word to get you all fired up? Well, for me, that word was so simple, but yet so powerful because she said, hello. And the moment the soft subtleness of her voice hit my ears, <laughs> a fire burned within. And it was then that it began. I began to feel so empowered, so inspired that this individual said hello to little old me. We do not understand how powerful it is just to acknowledge an individual. So my encouragement to you, my friends, is to take time to acknowledge someone as you pass along the way, because you do not know the impact just a hello can have on one's life. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Uh, I, I, Mute yourself. Good. Derek, can I treat you like the champion you are, or must I um, cuddle you? Oh, no, don't cuddle me. Don't cuddle me. I love Bruce. Okay, good. Sisters. Okay. <laughs> the wounds of a friend are good wounds. Okay, I'm not going to wound you. All right, fine. So this is what I teach in Table Topics 101. Begin the way you end it. Use your title as the opening. Use your title as the conclusion. It's ready-made for you. It only just begun is the title. Now, what, Dave, what um, Derek did was to creatively, yes, creatively, yes, sang a song. It only takes a spark to set a fire going. It, okay, fine. Now, that took a little bit of time. Good, but... It only just begun. It only takes a spark. You know, it, it's, and then he went on a little bit further. And then uh, about 20 minutes, 20 seconds into the speech, we got it begun. I rec recommend that in the first five seconds of your speech, <clears throat> hit the title. It will help you to stay on track. And then, for God's sake, well, not for God's sake. God ain't got no problem. For your sake, land, do up what I call a perfect landing. Anybody watch the gymnastic shows? or the gymnast shows. Yes. And you can do all the triple and the multiple and the triple and the flipple and the bipple and the cripple. <laughs> but if when you land, you that doesn't look good. Everybody loves a perfect landing. And a perfect landing is in table topic is on the topic. So you gotta work with your mind in such a way that you begin with a topic, begin meeting in the first five seconds, and at the end, land on the topic. That impresses everybody. And in the middle, fill it up, depending on the space you have. Good job, Derek. Thank you very much. Do we have time? Yes, one more. Okay. Who has the, who's the brave? Antonio, 
Achievers Toastmasters Club. Yes. Ah, <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Antonio Rivera, I am a leader. I am a leader, Antonio Rivera. One minute. Thank you, Gottfried. I am a leader. This is a role that I've had to take in many areas of my life, most recently in marrying my wife uh, this past July as the head of the household. And, as, and I appreciated your inclusion of, of God in your presentation as well, DTM McAllister, because as I learned in my studies um, at church, I am the head of the, my wife and Christ is the head of me. And that has helped me to uh, assume this role of, of leader as someone that my wife can look to for security for for guidance or just to hear about her concerns or anything that might be troubling her and sometimes it doesn't even take me to actually do anything about those concerns it, it could just be me allowing her to express herself and giving her confidence and knowing that she can look to me for guidance and I, that i'll always point us and her and myself towards our source our god so um that's who i look to as a leader and he's helped me develop myself as a leader and i hope to continue to do that as i continue in my roles at our club and uh, serving toastmasters here in in our club achievers in the division and just continuing to show up and try to improve myself as we all know that we like to do as members of our clubs and as members of this fine organization. So I call on all of you to see how you can become better leaders in your own uh, lives. And, and, and hopefully Toastmasters continues to be a platform uh, that will help you to do just that. Thank you, DTM McAllister. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Antonio. Now, the positive sides. He introduced, first of all, he personalized it, he gave personal stories, very good. He uh, had a call to action, very important. He made it relevant to us. He had a call to action. He had a message, he had a call to action. He did not give a perfect landing. Uh, thank you, DTM McAllister is neither here nor there. The perfect landing is, I am a leader. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, I am a leader. Come on, give me a break. That's how you do it, okay? Penas and uh, uh, penas or penas or whatever. One of the asses. Sorry. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> One of those words. Where are you really? Uh, you know. But lick, lick it in with the title. He didn't begin with the title. Well, yeah, he began with the title, but he, he said, "Thank you, DTM McCallis." No, no, no. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for those courtesies in a table topics presentation in two minutes, <laughs> unless you don't have enough to say. Get right into it. All protocols observed before the contest begins. You know, get right into it, assuming you have something to say. Get to the title in the first five seconds, land on that title with, with um, what is the word? Pizzazz? Panache. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's right, panache, right. I think there's another word with a Z way, you know, pizzazz or pizzazz. Anyway, whatever, whatever. Pizzazz. Whatever. Pizzazz. pizzazz, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure there's another word, yeah. <laughs> But he gave a call to action. Uh, he did re repeat the term mo on more than one occasion. Leader, leader, leader. Repetition is important. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the end of this whirlwind presentation. Now I can breathe. And as a reminder, everyone, please fill out uh, the evaluations. I posted the link in the chat. So please, you have 24 hours, but try to turn it in as soon as possible. Excellent presentation, Godfrey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.